The story of friendship between a boy and his dog is as old as time, but I believe one still reigns supreme. The 1954 series succinctly titled Lassie. in a time when achieving TV greatness meant lasting six seasons. Lassie enjoyed 19, with nearly 600 wholesome, charming episodes for man and beast to enjoy. You don't have to wear your collar and leash until you get there. And I don't have to wear this leash until I get there. So why did that winning streak not make it to 20? And just why is the beloved Lassie not who we think she is? Or should I say, he is? Well, I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, with these answers and more as we delve into the history and secrets of this sweet series. If you dig the video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so Timmy will know when our next deep dive begins. But without further ado, let's head back to a simpler time. The First Literary Lassie The name Lassie already came with a lot of star power dating back to the 1800s. Its existence is all thanks to the creation of a popular fictional dog, like how we retell the story of Hercules and other folklore. Our first canine companion comes from a short story called The Half Brothers, where the heroic hound is a collie that saves two brothers trapped in the snow. And when they can't carry on, Lassie rushes to get help and saves the day. Decades later, there would be stories of a collie mix named Lassie that saved the life of a wounded World War I soldier. Then came the short story Lassie Come Home, a tale of separation, love, and reunion that melted all hearts and inspired MGM Studios to bring the story to the big screen. And so we got Lassie Come Home, Son of Lassie, and Courage of Lassie. Lassie for the screen. The very first Lassie from those MGM films was actually a boy dog named Pal, owned by his trainer, Rudd Weatherwax. And Pal's own life is pretty inspiring too. His original family came to Rudd complaining the months old puppy chased motorcycles, chewed on everything, and barked nonstop. Pal's family preferred quiet life and Rudd was offered to keep the pup. What else can you say but yes, absolutely, I want that puppy, can we keep him mom please? Okay, anyway. Pal was especially good with kids, so when MGM was looking for a collie, Pal was a perfect fit. Even still, it was a grueling process with some 300 other dogs vying for the gig. Poor Pal got stage fright during his first rehearsal, but like any true underdog, our hero made a comeback. Rudd and Lassie spoke their own language and the director was not privy to that. Seven films later, it seemed Lassie's cinematic stories were completed. So instead of giving Rudd his 40 grand, MGM gave him sole rights to Lassie, the name and image. So Rudd took Lassie on the road, traveling to rodeos, fairs, and other events. While Rudd kept the Lassie name and fame fresh, the entertainment industry was developing this whole new way of bringing stories to life. You may have heard of it, television. One plot producer, Robert Maxwell, wanted to explore the small screen relationship of a boy and his dog. So he partnered with the famous Lassie owner to see it happen. Lassie was always a guy dog. The Lassie of those stories was always a female pup, but the dogs that played her in the 1954 series were all male. It started with Pal, and then there was Lassie Jr., Spook, Baby, Meyer, and Hey Hey. Again, all male. Why? Well, Pal started the trend, initially rejected for Lassie Come Home for being a boy dog. But his performance as a stuntman, or stunt dog, was so successful that he won the role over for the rest of the films. They decided to shoot the whole movie starring my father's dog, Pal, who became Lassie. And then it comes down to appearance. Unneutered females would experience something called blow coat, where hormones made their fur puff out. On top of that, girl collies are noticeably smaller, and Lassie producers felt the male dogs had a grander presence. Bigger also meant little Timmy looked smaller for more years. The series pilot would be Pal's last job before passing in 1958. 
The dog was 18 years old and left poor old Rudd crushed to the point that he could never watch a Lassie movie ever again. Lassie Jr. had a brief stint before stepping back to battle cancer. Thankfully, he won but didn't work again. Junior's own son, Spook, took over and lived up to his name as he was easily frightened. But Spook pulled through and held down the fort until his baby brother, Baby, was done training. But Baby would live to just eight, while most other Lassie dogs made it to around 17. Then came Meyer, who's seen most in the syndicated seasons, before finally Hey Hey brought it home home, in a very different setting than we were used to. Mm-mm, good. Even the best ideas can't get off the ground without some deep wallets. Fortunately, Lassie had a friend in Campbell Soup, which just happened to go public in 1954. This doggy folk hero was a merchandise magnet and had Campbell's as a lifelong sponsor for all 19 seasons. And of course, Lassie. If you were watching Lassie, you'd be seeing Campbell's. It's one of the first examples of product placements. The contract dictated that the cast couldn't be in any other media that made them look un-American because that would make the soup look bad. The partnership worked because compared to pre-Lassie days, Campbell's sales rose 70%. Now that's mm-mm good profits. And the relationship went both ways. Campbell's did plenty of Lassie advertising too, offering snazzy brown wallets, friendship rings, promotions to name Lassie's pups, prize money, and more. Tell me in the comments if you have any of the 70,000 Lassie rings that are out there somewhere. Allergic to change. The Enduring series can be broken up into eras, debuting with the Jeff Miller era, but the pressure of the role was a lot for Tommy Reddick, and on top of all that, he was actually allergic to dogs. But Pal actually liked him best, and Lassie would listen to him more than his own trainer. You hear? And you ain't gonna stop me either. It's all right, Lassie. Come on. The studio recruited Broadway titan Jan Clayton as widow Ellen Miller, and the family worked, but it was brief. As by age 15, Tommy didn't want to play a childish role anymore, and as for Jan, she was eager to get back to musical theater too. But this presented a pretty big problem. Could Lassie survive without the Millers? Campbell's soup sure hoped so. One executive said, quote, we lose those three Millers and we're going to be up a creek with that valuable dog. The pressure sure was on. In keeping with the boy and his dog theme, producers combed through 200 hopeful kids before finally landing on John Provost, the one and only Timmy Martin. But the turnover continued. Cloris Leachman and John Shepard came and went pretty quickly for season four. But thankfully, we had June Lockhart to save the day, joining the cast for season five and beyond, all before she got lost in space. Timmy, aka John, joined in season four and quickly became as iconic as Lassie. For how often it's referenced, though, he's never actually fallen into a well. Hey, what's up? There's some poor kid fell down a well. Yes. Lassie's ratings didn't fall either, and its success seemed secured. But another big event shook up the entire trajectory for good. The death of George Cleveland, aka Grandpa. TV was still new, and no one had any idea how to address a cast member dying. They even had to talk to a child psychologist, because it wasn't just parents teaching kids about the heavy stuff, it was TV. So a script was written and the sponsors weren't too happy. It was all about honesty, no soft metaphors like sleeping, and it promoted just letting kids cry. Syndication success. Sundays at seven belong to Lassie. And boy, what a time slot they landed. It's hard to explain that alchemy, uh, why a dog would have such power over uh, people. Life was simple and clean, and for years we could count on Lassie. Only problem was, again, TV was changing. And as part of that, prime time moved to 8 p.m. on Sunday. CBS had its lineup of family shows locked in. The final piece was Lassie, but the network felt seven was the only time to keep success. And so maybe this was the time to close the door and focus on other projects. Lassie was canceled. 
Of course, that was not the end completely. We're talking Elvis levels of merchandising here. That doesn't go away overnight. Instead, Lassie lived on in syndication for another two years, giving us 591 episodes to cherish over and over again. Lassie Legacy Lassie cemented its place into television history and today ranks as the sixth longest running primetime series, bested only by The Simpsons, two Law & Order shows, Gunsmoke, and Family Guy. As for Lassie herself, well, she's an enduring hero for a reason. This precious pooch came a long way since 1800s myths. And thanks to the show, in 2005, Variety listed Lassie in its 100 icons of the century, the only animal to make the list. Good on ya, pup. We've covered a lot of important groundbreaking shows in our deep dives, but Lassie manages to stand out in its own stunning ways. It practically wrote the book for TV success when there was hardly anything to go on. And while the adults had Gunsmoke for their triumphs, younger viewers had Lassie, a hero and a title that gave a lot of people and dogs great memories. So now it's your turn. Which era was your favorite? Did you prefer Jeff's Kali, Primetime Timmy, or the days romping through the forest? Any of you out there have a Kali yourself? Let us know in the comments below, we read them all. And if you love this video, please put your paws on that thumbs up icon to show support. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a memory. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.